I want to share 15 random graphic design tips that will blow your mind. Whether you are a beginner or you want to level up your skills, then this video is for you. Starting with the very first one, if you want to see the skeletal parts of your design in Corel Draw, you want to see how everything is behind the scene, you're going to come to view and you're going to activate wireframe and you are able to see everything hidden around this design. You're going to see the skeletal parts of this design and you can always click on view and go back to enhance to see how it was let's say if there are hidden objects around this design let's say we have an object like this and this object is hidden behind this design and you try to find that object you can simply go to view and you go to wireframe then you're going to find the object here you can simply hold on alt and find the object till you are able to select the object we also have same feature in adobe illustrator if you come to adobe illustrator and you click on view and click on outline you see the skeletal parts of of your design basically the wireframe of your design so you can see everything hidden behind the scene and you can select each object you want to select with this the shortcut is Ctrl Y, so you can simply click on Ctrl Y to either see your wireframe or Ctrl Y to come back to your original view. And let's say for this image here, there are objects that are behind this image and you can't see. You can simply press Ctrl Y and you're able to see those objects and you are able to select these objects particularly. In Photoshop, if you have an object like this and you want to add this pattern on this object, it's very simple. First off, you're going to place this background where you want it to be placed and then you can deactivate the background then you click on the object layer click on your object selection tool and make a selection of this object then you activate the layer click on the background layer and click on where you have add layer max then you have something that looks like this you can click on the layer again and then click on where you have your blending options and click on multiply then automatically you are able to make the background to be on this object just like that if you have a vector object like this in corel draw and you want to smoothen these edges because definitely it's not smooth and you want to smoothen these edges it's very simple select the object and go to where you have your shape tool then you're going to see smooth tool click on that and you can simply hover your cursor around the edges so you can get a smooth uh edge like this yeah just keep on doing that until you are able to get the smooth edge so we are able to get a smooth edge as good as this. That's what the smooth tool does. So if you use a plug and play PC and every time you work, if your PC suddenly shuts down unexpectedly, you automatically lose the Photoshop file you were working on. So this is what you're going to do to save recovery options every five minutes. Open your Photoshop and go to where you have edit go to preferences and go to where you have file handling this dialog box pops up you're going to change where you have 10 minutes to 5 minutes and that's it so you hit on ok you can restart your photoshop and once you do that Every time you design in Photoshop, your Photoshop will save your file recovery informations every five minutes as you design. And this is going to happen in the background. So back to Adobe Illustrator, if you have objects scattered around like this and you want to evenly distribute or space this object, if you resort to spacing them this way, uh, trying to get the smart guides, well, it's not a bad idea but there are other easy ways to do this you can simply highlight all the objects and go to where you have windows you go to where you have align good or you simply hit on shift f7 shift f7 and it brings up this uh pop-up menu you can simply hit on where you have horizontal distribute space and when you hit on that you can see all the objects are evenly distributed automatically okay in adobe photoshop if you want to quickly fill a particular layer with the current color in either your foreground or your background you can simply press ctrl plus backspace to fill it with the current background color or alt plus backspace to fill it with the current foreground color and if you want to fill it with a particular pattern you can press shift backspace and then you're going to select the pattern you want pretty much i can leave the current pattern and make sure that your content here has pattern yeah you hit on ok and it will fill it with the current pattern and note this this does not work with layers that contains smart objects in corel draw if you have a circle like this and it has 
the outline points, let's say 16 points for the outline. And you notice that if you make this object bigger like this, the outline size becomes very thin like that. You can see the more you increase the object, the outline becomes very thin. That's not because the outline size is becoming smaller, but it's not scaling with the object. If you want your outline size to scale with the object size as you are increasing the object size, the outline size is also increasing. You simply go to where you have this outline pane and double click there. So it brings up this dialog box and all you have to do is to click on scale with object and hit on OK. So next time you increase the size of a particular object, the object increases its size and the outline will be scaled with the object size and everything will remain the same. Pretty much that's it. Back to Adobe Photoshop. In Adobe Photoshop, if you have objects scattered around like this and you want to evenly distribute them, you want them to be in the same line and have the same spacing we did something like this for adobe illustrator so this is for adobe photoshop now so all you have to do is to highlight all the objects you can simply select all the layers here and click on these three dots to open up all the align and distribute options and when you do that you can click on where you have align vertical centers and it will align every object like this then you can simply click on where you have distribute horizontally and all the objects will be evenly distributed just like that so in adobe illustrator corel draw users will call it power clip but in adobe illustrator if you want to place this image in this circle pretty much this is the image of our sweet springs governor of cross river state if you want to place this image in this circle in adobe illustrator it's clipping max not power clip so you click on the object and bring it to the circle as simple as that and make sure that the object is behind the circle so you place it the way you want it to be placed highlight both the object and the circle or the shape you want to power clip the image on and press ctrl 7 and automatically the image is now inside the circle and if you want to edit this image you can simply click on your direct selection tool and click on the image then you can move it around and if you want to open the power clip like corel draw users would say I want to open the power clip. If you want to open, click on the image, right click and click on isolate image. Then pretty much you are now on the image itself, but it's still inside the circle. So if you want to go back, you can click on back one level and then go back to the final layer. That's it. This is very similar in Photoshop. If you want to create a clipping max, that is you want this image to be inside this circle. But this time around, you're going to place the image on top of the circle. And the shortest cut is you hold alt and hover your cursor to where you have the layer in between the image and the circle and click on that and automatically the image is now inside the circle so you can just move your image around there just like that if this happens to you in corel draw maybe you created a shape like this and after clicking outside the shape and you're trying to click on the shape again this shape has no fill you try to click on this shape then there is one problem all you have to do is to go to where you have treat all objects as field click on that and you'll be able to click on any object whether it has a fill or not you'll be able to click and move that object if you have a shape like this in adobe illustrator and you try to transform this shape this way and this way then you are doing it the wrong way this is the easiest way to do it click on the shape and click on e on your keyboard and then to automatically activate free transform tool then you click on where you have perspective distort so any point of this shape you hold it will automatically adjust the two sides of the shape evenly so that's it if you click on this other side it will do the same so pretty much that's it if you want to create a half tone text effect in corel draw you click on the text and click on your transparency to apply transparency on the parts of the text you want the half tone to take place to take place and you simply go to where you have effect and click on point stylizer it brings up this dialog box so you can simply click on apply and pretty much that's it if you want to limit the colors or increase it you can increase that and click on apply again if you want it to be less, you can apply again. Pretty much that's it. You can make other adjustments on this panel to make your half tone look perfect the way you want. And last but not the least, in Adobe Illustrator, if you want to draw any shape without sketching it, simply press Shift N to activate this suite tool called Shaper tool. 
and when you sketch any object for adobe illustrator will automatically draw what you are trying to sketch let's say we try to draw a square it automatically gives us a square same thing to circle it will automatically draw a circle for us so pretty much that's it if you love to learn how to use adobe illustrator click on this video right here and keep watching i'll see you in the next one